On your 3D art journey to improve your art and become a professional 3D artist, chances are you probably hit some rough spots along your path. If you're like me, the thoughts, this is too hard, I'm not good enough, or I just have bad luck, probably have crept in the back of your head and you thought about quitting and giving up on your dream of becoming a professional 3D artist. You might think that these problems of your journey are unique to only you and that you're here all by yourself. I know that exact feeling because for every obstacle that I faced along my 3D journey of becoming a professional 3D artist, I thought that I was the only one going through them. Until one day, all that changed. And by random luck, I found that my problems were much more common than I initially thought. You see, I learned that these very common problems were the top reasons that many aspiring 3D artists quit. And many of these artists quit right before being so close to having that big break in their career. I was able to compile a list of the top five reasons 3D artists give up and how to effectively manage these roadblocks to keep you on your path to becoming the great 3D artist that you were always meant to be. So if you're a 3D artist that's ready to throw in the towel and give up on your dreams, watch this video first. What's up guys, this is JL Musi. If you're new to the channel, I'm a professional 3D artist with experience working in film and video games. I've created educational content for companies like Autodesk and my software reviews have been featured in PC Mag. I have spent the last couple of years answering many questions from aspiring 3D artists. Maybe you come across some of my content and you figure out that this guy has it all figured out. And the ironic part is for somebody that has literally answered tens of thousands of questions, when I first started out as a student, I felt like I had zero answers. The reality is I struggled a lot early on as a student trying to create professional 3D art. From attending an expensive 3D art animation program that didn't quite deliver, to going through years of a painful, slow, self-taught route, plus overcoming some tough times in my personal life, I can honestly say there were many times that I wanted to quit pursuing my dream of becoming a professional 3D artist. Eventually, I was able to bring my art to a professional level and make a career out of it that I was proud of. And those struggles that I had in the past started to fade. As I started growing a YouTube audience and interacting with more and more artists like you, something interesting started to happen along the way. General 3D questions turned to long emotional emails. The more I opened up about my life and my content, the more other artists started to open up to me about their personal struggles with 3D art and the reasons that they wanted to quit. And all those personal struggles that I had early on in my career started to resurface. One day, something remarkable happened. I got a DM on Instagram, and then I also got a long personal email that was followed up by a message on Discord and a long YouTube comment. And finally, I jumped into a one-on-one -on -one session and had a long conversation with one of my students that I was mentoring. The common thread with all these conversations all deal with why these artists wanted to give up on their 3D art. And these were many of the exact same reasons on why at some point early on in my career, almost quit 3D art as well. Like a detective that's been trying to break that cold murder case for years, taking all these frustrating breaking points from all these different 3D artists and cross-referencing them with my own struggles, I started to connect the dots and the reasons why most 3D artists give up on their dreams became crystal clear. To help aspiring 3D artists crush that technical barrier of creating professional 3D art, I will be hosting a free training event, the Hard Surface Masterclass. I will teach you my simple step-by-step -step process for creating the 3D models to help you land your dream 3D job. Register for free at my masterclass using the link in this YouTube card somewhere up here or in the pinned comment down below. So without further ado, let's jump to my list of the top five reasons why 3D artists give up on their 3D journey and how to effectively manage these roadblocks. Make sure to watch this video all the way to the end where I give you my biggest takeaway, which will really help you crush any obstacle that stands in your way 
towards becoming the great 3D artist you were always meant to be. Technical difficulties. Like most 3D artists, you probably wanted to get into video games or film because you were inspired by that very same medium. And I bet you didn't see your favorite movie whose VFX you loved and said to yourself, I bet that topology on that character is great. Or I bet you didn't play your favorite video game and said, that's a very efficient UV layout on that item. You were inspired by the art and the way that that game or movie made you feel. As you scroll casually through a portfolio website, at first, we often don't realize the technical component that takes to make great 3D art. As you started to learn how to create that 3D art, however, you find that the process can be much more technical than artistic than you initially thought. And that can be quite a shock for many artists, including myself. I was a great artist through school, but when it came to 3D, I actually struggled quite a bit because of that technical barrier. So I've been fortunate enough to travel quite a bit, and usually I fly and then do a rental car when I arrive to my destination. A lot of times I do like to test out different vehicles. Sometimes they're sports cars that can actually go quite fast. But a lot of times these rental car companies will put a governor which actually caps out the top speed of that vehicle. So maybe if you run a Corvette, even though on the dash it might say 200, with that governor, it'll cap out about 100. And this is a perfect analogy for 3D artists and how the technical side could actually cap out your artistic potential when it comes to creating high level 3D art. Let's just say you want intricate details on a model well, your understanding of topology is going to cap out the execution of those details. Or maybe you want very detailed textures, but the way that you lay out your UVs will hinder you from achieving that maximum texture resolution. The technical aspect of 3D art is equivalent to that governor. So it really caps out the artistic quality that can go into your 3D art. And once you've mastered the technical parts, you can really go back to pushing the artistic side. For example, I had a one-on-one -on -one student and she was a great artist and she was a ZBrush artist. She had very strong artistic background and she actually managed to create some high level art. And that's something that ZBrush to its merit of that package somewhat allows you to do because you can use so many polygons to create something very, very aesthetically pleasing. Uh, also with poly painting, you actually don't need to understand UVs. So she was actually able to create a very impressive portfolio and get hired creating video game art. But she ran into the problem later into her career that the technical aspect that she was missing hindered her from excelling at these positions she was getting hired for. And that's why she eventually ended up reaching out to me and uh, I was able to help her pretty much match her high artistic abilities to uh, also having a more solid technical foundation. And eventually she was able to get back out there on the grind. And from the updates she sent me, she's actually doing very good. Uh, she was able to combine her technical knowledge and her amazing art skills. That is one of the things that you have to understand when you get hired as a production artist. You might think that you're making a bunch of cool artistic stuff, but a bulk of it is going to rely more on the technical production side. So a lot of times you have to worry about topology. You have to worry about UVs. You have to worry about rigging. While having good art aesthetics in your portfolio is important, many of the key art decisions in a larger production are usually done by the concept artist in the pre-production stage. So there's a good chance that if your specific role outside of concept art, you will need to have a strong technical knowledge of creating production quality 3D art. So I have a saying here, the art gets you admired and production quality gets you hired. So my advice is be prepared to learn the technical side of 3D art as much as the artistic side. And if you feel overwhelmed initially, that's okay. I was also overwhelmed as well. Learn one concept and then gradually learn another building up your technical knowledge of 3D art. The learning curve has come down quite a bit 
as software packages and tools have evolved. But the technical barrier still does exist. So keep your foot on the gas, keep pushing at it, and soon enough, you'll be able to take that governor, get rid of that technical barrier, and getting rid of that technical barrier will really help you speed through to have some amazing 3D artworks. The motivation myth. Many times as creatives and artists, we need external motivation. We'll jump on our favorite portfolio websites or scroll through Instagram to get motivated. We get a bunch of reference and then we create this elaborate project folder. We open up our scene, we stare at that monitor and nothing happens. And that's because motivation is a feeling and it eventually fades. What you wanna do, instead of going for feelings, you wanna build a routine and a routine is an action. Think about New Year's resolutions. Around this time of year, a lot of people want to get in better shape and there's a lot of motivation that is external that is floating around. A lot of YouTube content, you'll turn on Good Morning America, and everybody's talking about the New Year's resolutions and getting into better shape. And you get caught up by those feelings, but you're not really ready to actually make that a routine. And you have to make things a routine outside of external factors like feeling motivated. For example, I've been working out since I was in high school and I just got into a routine of doing it. So every morning I get up and I just knock out my workout out of the day. I'm not looking for an external feeling to make me go work out. I actually just made it a routine. And that way you could actually keep something like fitness, which is somewhat of a grind, and you can be more consistent. And this principle of taking something and making a routine and putting action behind it to continually improve is better than waiting for that motivation. This applies to 3D art. So instead of going on Instagram for your inspiration or motivation, you could actually make a habit of creating that art. And what can happen is the more you create that art, you will actually form your own intrinsic motivation and you will improve much quicker because you just developed that routine. So if you do something, I wanna say the stat is if you do something for more than seven days, it actually becomes a routine. And it can be somewhat challenging at first, but if you push through it, making a routine, you'll have a lot more success than waiting for the feeling of motivation. The path to confidence. Many 3D artists that I talk to don't feel confident. First, it starts with the ability to create professional 3D art, and then it eventually transfers to the confidence of applying for work. In 2021, I was in Hawaii and I did one of the most horrific and scariest things that I ever did. And potentially it could have cost me my life, but it's directly tied in to how we grow confident in a particular area. You will have to earn the confidence at every step of your art and your career. I think this definition of confidence really applies here. Confidence is a feeling of self-assurance arising from one's appreciation of one's abilities or qualities. It's a mentality that was earned through the repetition of performing a challenging task until it becomes effortless. So that event that could have cost me my life was actually going scuba diving. The reality of the situation didn't really hit me until I was on the boat off the coast of Hawaii and I put all the gear and then you put on this very, very heavy air tank and you feel that. And then you're actually gonna jump in the water with this thing in your back that weighs like 50, 60, 70 pounds. And the instructor's just going on and on about all these hand signals, how to breathe, how to decompress, you know, what to do if you get into trouble. And the first exercise that they have you do is actually just go right below the surface and get comfortable. Uh, I jump in the water off the boat and as soon as you hit the water, all that prepping that the instructor was doing for 20 minutes goes out the window. And the fact is it is actually very challenging to learn how to breathe through a tank 
instead of how we normally breathe on the ground. So you're in the water, you're panicking, and then at a certain point, it's very challenging, and you kind of have to gather your thoughts. You have to focus, and you have to remember what that instructor told you. So after the first two terrifying uh, minutes underwater, you kind of get a grip of what's going on. And then, you know, once you're under the surface, you go and dive in deeper. So after that initial dive, they took us back in the boat and we kind of regrouped and went in for another deeper dive. But after that first dive, I was so much more confident because even though it was super challenging, especially those first two minutes, I basically made it. You know, I was able to breathe underwater. I didn't drown. Uh, I was able to decompress. And even though my technique and things obviously could have been done better, you know, after that initial fear of that first dive and me going through that challenging period, I grew much more confident. And the second dive was exponentially easier. And next time that I do go diving, I do want to get certified and actually be able to go uh, well below under 100 feet, which you do need a certification. So you can develop confidence by focusing on a challenging but small task to help out with your 3D growth. And it could be one specific thing like better blockouts, better topology, better UVs, or better textures. But the key here is to repeat that one challenging task until it's no longer challenging. There's many ways of doing this. You could find a 3D competition in a area that you want to grow in. I know Autodesk and the Rookies currently has a great competition going on and I'll throw a link in the description down below. Or maybe you can find uh, a project-based course that challenges you with actual exercises. And as you complete these exercises, you'll actually challenge yourself and grow confident in a certain area so these are two great ways that you could actually challenge yourself go through something difficult and that's how you will gain confidence failure to invest in yourself some artists wear the self-taught artist title like a badge of honor and i know this firsthand because that's what i did for a very long time it actually came off the back of a large financial investment in my education through a 3D animation program that didn't really deliver. And after that disappointing educational experience, I kind of went and did a 180 where I told myself, I'm gonna learn most of this on my own. But honestly, the self-taught route for me was somewhat of a slow grind. And watching your skills not improve for months or years can be very, very frustrating. And this does cause a lot of artists to actually give up on their dreams. For a long time, there were actually two extremes to learning how to create professional 3D art. One of them was to enroll in an expensive uh, 3D animation program. And the other was kind of the opposite where you would just get DVDs uh, and have very little interaction with instructors. But now there's more happy mediums they're much more accessible to a lot of different artists. Some of these options include things like mentorships. So you could have a professional look at your work. You know, that's actually something that I did back before you could hit up, you know, somebody on ArtStation, somebody through Instagram or somebody through YouTube. Uh, but I was in college and my portfolio, uh, the 3D art program was uh, pretty terrible at teaching you the skills that I needed. Uh, I was somewhat uh, knowing that I needed help with my portfolio and I wasn't really able to get it from the instructors there. Uh, by chance, I ran into a artist who had experience um, and you know, that was kind of the, one of the, uh, the cool things about going to an art store to get supplies because not only did I do 3D, but uh, I also did a lot of traditional art. So upon learning that this artist had professional experience, you know, uh, I try to get him to look at my portfolio, but you know, he was like, well, you know, I'm kind of busy. And then uh, I kind of did something that was, uh, I guess, counterintuitive at the time, uh, at least for a broke college student. I offered him like a hundred bucks. You know, this was a couple of years ago. So hundred bucks, uh, it's money now, but uh, it was actually a lot more a couple of years ago. He kind of thought about it initially. 
and said, you know what, um, you know, what are you doing next week? Uh, we kind of set up a time and uh, we met up like at a Starbucks. He, he looked at my portfolio and he gave me great advice. The crazy thing about the advice that he gave me is that I was able to implement it in some of my 3D art pieces. Eventually, I did get hired for the art director there. He actually pointed out to one of those pieces that I got feedback from uh, the artist and uh, you know that was uh, something that made me felt like it was a great investment because none of the uh, college instructors actually gave me that advice. So getting a real professional to look at my work and instantly pinpoint my weaknesses was something that I don't know how long it would have took me to actually pick up on or maybe I wouldn't even have gotten that initial job which a lot of times it is that big break that a lot of 3D artists actually seek. Another more budget friendly way of investing in yourself is actually spend time where there's a lot of artists, uh, more specifically in groups. Uh, this could be like big Facebook groups or forums, uh, but you do have to be uh, weary of that you can either get no advice or sometimes even worse to getting no good advice or feedback is bad advice. You see, not all advice is the same. Uh, there are really two key components on getting good advice. One is the person that is actually giving you the advice and their expertise, because you know when you join these large groups, a lot of times you don't really know who's a student or a seasoned professional giving you a great advice. And if you take that wrong advice and you run with it, a lot of times you can waste a lot of time and that's why you know sometimes paying for a mentorship can be uh, basically cut off a lot of bad advice uh, the other factor too when you're in one of these groups is they do have to ask the right questions because theoretically somebody could give you the right advice but it might not apply to your specific need you know a true artist that has experience will always ask you, what is the intended purpose of this asset? Because the purpose of the asset will dictate how that asset is built. Those nuances will actually lead to that person giving you better advice at the end. The other key component about groups is the quality of the group. And a lot of people think the larger the group, the better it is. And that's not usually the case. I like to think about how invested are the people in those groups? So one of them could be if they're invested in learning, meaning this could be that they purchase some kind of course and the course gives them access to a group. And usually uh, when people actually invest in their education, they're gonna take that more serious and they're gonna take that group more serious. So I've seen a lot of uh, great uh, groups that are on the backs of could be some kind of schooling or it could be online course but when people invest and it doesn't have to be you know a two three four thousand dollar course but as long as people invest their money a lot of times they're going to be more willing to invest their time another great type of group in my experience are groups that are based around a specific project and a lot of times these are free uh, these usually come off the back of if you're working on an indie project and you have a group of artists working together towards a common goal, you really will get high level uh, feedback. Uh, also art competitions, which I touched earlier on the video. Um, if you have a bunch of artists that are creating artwork and you're competing, but yet you do kind of have a team, much more of a team building dynamic because everybody's working towards a common goal of completing that competition and they're invested in that competition, a lot of times, even though the group number per se is smaller, you will get much more better feedback, which will make you grow as an artist much quicker. And that growth is what's gonna be basically keeping you on your path to becoming a great 3D artist, much more than just stagnating and trying to do this on your own. The reality is you can grind it out as a self-taught artist. It's just gonna take a lot longer. Uh, we've gone from basically a time where the resources for a 3D artist were very limited to a time of age where there's so much free content 
uh, that there's a uh, content overload. And sometimes looking for free quality content, what a lot of people don't realize is that it takes a lot of time to dig and find that one good piece of content that you're actually looking for. So if you're grinding it out on your own and you're having a lot of slow growth, a lot of, a lot of times that slow growth can lead to us just wanting to give up. So if I had to do it all over again, even though I spent thousands of dollars on my education and you know that didn't really deliver for me, but if I had to do it all over, um, I think I would actually invest more and get more mentorship because the exponential growth as an artist uh, is pretty remarkable when you have somebody there to whatever level picking out your weak points and giving you advice along the way. At the end of the day, if you have the right skills, you can land a high paying job as a 3D artist. Many of the options that I just mentioned are usually a fraction of a college tuition and can get you a dramatic decrease in the learning curve versus going through the self-taught route. Letting bad educational experiences prevent your future success. Learning how to make 3D art at a professional level can be somewhat of a long journey and greatly influenced how you learn that process. Expensive 3D art schools that don't deliver results can often leave many students feeling like they were shortchanged and didn't get their money's worth. While grinding it out via the self-taught route can make the process of learning 3D art painful and slow. Regardless of what educational method we choose, if the experience is a painful one, this can cause many artists to start being resentful of the process and of creating 3D art itself, often leading us to abandon our dreams of becoming professionals. That's the feeling that I had after spending tens of thousands of dollars on a computer animation program that didn't deliver. But as you will soon see, that's how exactly one of my students felt. And this is what I mentioned in the beginning of the video that some of these are very popular themes and frustrations across a lot of different 3D artists that causes them to give up. Onor wanted to become a 3D artist specializing in hard surface modeling. He attended an expensive 3D art program at a private school that didn't deliver results. And he was quite a bit down on himself. He decided to contact me so I could help him progress and get him back on track. The short snippet is of me giving advice to Anur when we were talking about his feelings of giving up on 3D art. It's like this, uh, I really want to uh, work in this field. I really love 3D modeling actually, and it's, uh, it's a passion of mine, which I wanted to do for years. And I just worked very hard to this goal, uh, earned some money and got some help from, from my family. And it just sucks that I just paid such a shitload of money to some school and it really got me hard. I mean, I have seen Afghanistan firsthand. I have seen, I have been in Iraq firsthand. Uh, I have seen my friends die in front, in front of mine. Lots of things happened. I haven't been shaked so much. The only thing uh, since I got to this civil life is it's 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 a little bit different, you know. You, if you have something to do, you finish it. And I finish it on time, I finish it perfectly, you know. This is my credo, always. Yeah, like, like I said, I was working like crazy. Uh, day and night in the school doing overtime. I mean, they had, let's say, uh, four, uh, four hours of uh, lessons, you know, I was doing eight hours of extra, some uh, self-tutoring and so on. And I'm really working my ass off and um, hearing from those guys that I made a shit stuff just because I wasn't agreeing with them was set off because I have this pressure on me that I need to get into the work after I'm finishing with the school. I'm 44 years old already, you know, and I feel the pressure just somehow. People are not telling me directly that I have to do this. They say, yeah, okay, cool. You have paid so much money to the school. Oh my God, like this, you know? Let me tell you something, man. When I, when I was in school, I got depressed. I got, you know, very, I was going through a lot of things in my life, like, physically my father had died my first animation class um i waited a whole bunch of time spent money got in the program i i, I go to the class and you know i want to see what everybody was working on 
And basically, it was a sign at the doors like, put put your project in the box, enjoy your summer, right? So I got no feedback. I didn't see any of the other guys that were in the class with me, like how they worked. And that, you know, like they didn't care. You know what I'm saying? They were just like, put your shit in the box, see you next summer. And, and that made me quit, like switch to graphic design. And graphic design wasn't even that great. And then I kind of actually went back and took more of the classes. But that, that taught me, man, it's like, just because you have a terrible school experience, it's gonna be up to you to learn, man, and and not be a, a victim to your circumstances, yeah. man. And you right. you got I know I know it's hard. I think what hurts the most is not paying all this money. Is that they don't care? You know, I, th I yeah. think if you would have paid even double the price of what you did, but you had quality instruction and somebody that that talked to you like a man and said, hey, man. I see you're doing this. I see you're doing that. Let, let's approach this and, and let, let, I, I got your back. We're going to get through this together, right? Honestly, if I would have the money back, you know, I would gladly give, uh, I mean, much of that money to you, which I'm getting at least something in uh, for, for that time and for that money. I mean, you're staying over time and so you're not hesitating to explain something to me. You, you're just trying to make me understand, you know? This is this is why I appreciate it, honestly. And I, you you cannot imagine how much I do I, I appreciate it because when I'm having questions and nobody's answering anything, I just feel shit. Why am I going to that school? Why am I paying that people and so on? And this is exactly you're right. And this is the reason why I just uh, tr uh, chose tr uh, to come to you and to get some lessons from you privately because. I really think that you are the man for it. I mean, I'm very happy about it, that I got to meet you and and that I'm getting in tutorial instructions from you. Honestly, I'm learning something from you. I, I, ju I just know the pain, brother. I, 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 I've been in your shoes, so it's like I, I relate to it and I know what a, a bad educational experience can do to artists and how I can make them quit. And I, I, I never want to be the reason you quit. I never want to come here you know, mess around or, or not take you seriously. You know, I, I take your time and your effort as serious as, you know, you take mine. So I don't want to be the reason no artist ever quits. And, you know, art, art and 3D art is, is a grueling thing. And I want to empower artists. I want to make their lives easier and not harder. And like I said, I know what it could do to somebody that's really just trying to get in the field and have people that you pay money and they don't, they don't care. You know, it's just about the money and it, it sucks at the end of the day, you know, they, the, the right. whole marketing thing, it's a whole right. different story when you pay that tuition and, you know, you get in that program, it's like they just feel used, you know? So yes. I, at the end of the day, you'll always need to keep learning. And sometimes we will come through experiences of learning something new that are more painful than others. The key here is to actually able to try different methods of learning. And if something's not working, Instead of getting overly emotional and just quitting, we can stop, analyze. And the thing about learning, people learn at different speeds, at different rates. And a lot of times we need different levels of interaction with those instructors. So while some might be doing very good with the self-taught route, some people or some students might need more one-on-one -on -one attention or really a combination of both at different times. So we have to be open to the idea that if an educational method is not working for us, then it's our responsibility to find one that does. And we shouldn't give up on the career and the dream that we have. If we look at the definition of giving up, there's a couple of definitions, but one that actually stands out. It's to abandon oneself to a particular feeling, influence, or activity. You see, giving up is a strong feeling, and it's usually a feeling that is brought up about a moment of intense frustration. Now that you have better ways of handling these common frustrations that most 3D artists will face, you'll be better equipped with the tools not to give up. Sometimes moments of frustration can bring out the worst in us. Life has a funny way of accumulating a lot of emotional baggage and sometimes that suitcase gets very very full 
and we're trying to juggle this, carry around this heavy weight, and then we trip and fall. The luggage falls, and all that nastiness or all those emotions that were in that baggage actually come out. We have that frustrating moment, and in those few short moments, we make rash decisions on giving up a career that we really want to end the temporary pain of that frustration. The sad truth of the matter is that we tend to regret those rash decisions done in the heat of the moment. These are decisions done with short-term thinking that can have long-term outcomes. So hopefully this video will better equip you with dealing with some of the difficult situations that many 3D artists have to deal with at some point in their career and prevent you from giving up on your dream of becoming a professional 3D artist. So I would love to know what some of the top frustrations as a 3D artist that you have experienced that has made you feel like giving up. Were most of these on the list or did I miss some? Before I end the video, make sure to attend my free training event, the Hard Surface Masterclass. I will teach you my simple step-by-step -step process for creating the 3D models to help you land your dream 3D job. Register for my free masterclass using the pinned comment down below. Until we meet again, folks, I will catch you next time.